real figures. Now, we have very seldom seen these on the air. I think you're going to find them extremely interesting. It's the first phase of the women's competition, which is expected to be a battle between two American girls, as I said, Dorothy Hamill and Diane Ballou, who comes from Los Angeles, born and raised, still lives there, but because of dual citizenship, has elected to skate for Holland. Now, there are three phases. There's the school figures, then the short free skating program, which we saw by the men early in tonight's program, and then the final four-minute free skating performance by the girls. Now, last year in the World Championship, at the end of the compulsory figures, what we're going to see tonight, Diane DeLue was first, Dorothy Hamill was fifth, and couldn't quite overtake that lead of Diane. So this is vitally important. We have a very good explanation of this, what it's all about. I think you're going to find it fascinating. The men, of course, will be doing it for you as our expert on the sport of figure skating, world champion Dick Butt. The sport of figure skating gets its name from the marvelous old designs that skaters performed in the ice. Elaborate designs like Maltese crosses and grapevines and even one's name. The basic figure, though, was a figure eight. And it forms the basis of the 71 figures that exist today in the formal part of the sport of figure skating. Dorothy Hamill here with her coach Carlo Fassi preparing for the Olympic Games. The figure that Dorothy does now is the counter outside. It's one of the three figures that will be skated first at the Olympic Games. Each of these figures must be exactly and carefully done. The slightest wobble will count off in the judge's scorecard. Each of the circles must be as round as possible and must be lined up. This happens to be a figure eight with an extra large circle and two turns connecting each of the circles. It's skated completely on the outside edge. You see Dorothy here on a back outer edge. Now watch her push off, skate half a circle and make the turn and go on into the third circle. She must trace each of these edges exactly. That's a good one. The second figure skated at the Olympic will be a bracket forward or a bracket backward. Dorothy here skating a two-circle figure. Watch her now on the back outside edge as she comes to the turn and lifts herself over it right there onto a forward edge. The figure skate has a groove down the length of the blade with an edge on each side so that if you turned it upside down, a pencil would rest comfortably down that groove, allowing the skater to skate on an inside or outside edge. Here Dorothy is starting the second circle of this bracket change bracket on a back inside edge. Now watch her change over the turn to a forward outside edge. The requirements are so tough in this part of the compulsory school figure skating that Carlo here, for example, using a scribe to draw a perfect circle over the figure that Dorothy has just skated to see how accurate it is. This figure that Dorothy does is the last one that will be skated at the Olympic. It will be a loop. This is called a back loop change loop, again based upon the figure eight, but this time each circle is the size of the skater with a smaller loop inside each of the larger circles. The difficult thing here is that each of those loops must be perfectly formed like a tear, which often appears upon the skater's cheek when they don't do it very well. And each of those loops or tears must be facing each other, an exceptionally difficult feat. Figure skating. Many people think it's the preparation for free skating, the flashy jumps and spins that we see in competition. But in actuality, figure skating is an art in itself. And from the practice ice in Colorado, we move now to the ladies figure skating competition here at the Olympic Games. And this is Dorothy Hamill doing that very bracket change bracket that we saw earlier in competition. Here she is, she's already completed the basic design.
design and is now on the very last tracing. The audience silent in the background, nobody applauding for fear of upsetting the concentration of the skater. The back inside bracket to a forward outside edge. A neat black dress, unobtrusive, and there she has finished the edge. Now the judges move in, nine of them. They will get down on their hands and knees and examine the turns to make sure that there are no flats or change of edges. A referee there brushing the snow off, putting a small flagpole at the top of the turns to make sure that they're lined up against each other. Look at the judges examining those turns by almost under a microscope. Concentrating, marking off the size of each figure, of each circle to make sure that they are the same size and the skater hasn't done one larger than the other. Here, Dorothy retiring as the judges line up now to make their decision, and there are the marks. Four, one, four zeros, four twos, four threes, four fours. Good marks. Marks that should hold Dorothy in very good stead. At the end of the first figure, Dorothy Hamill took a surprising lead. She was first ahead of Isabel de Navarre of West Germany. And in third place was Diane Delu of Holland, the chief threat to Dorothy here in the Olympic Games. Here is Diane now, immediately following Dorothy, the start of her bracket change bracket. Remember, she has to trace it three times. And one of the most important things is that she placed the turns. Here she comes to the one at the top of the back circle, exactly in line with the turn at the top of the first circle. Now, a skater can use every element that they can possibly lay their hands on to line up these figures. They don't have a good opportunity because they're skating backwards and their back is to it. So you notice here, she is using her coach, Doug Chapman, there in the blue coat, right there. Our camera happens by luck to be right opposite the first turn, and you can see that he has lined himself up with that first turn, and if she can see him out of the corner of his eye, it will be a help to her when she comes around to the second circle to know where to place that turn. Watch him see him there in the blue coat right in the back, out of the camera now. Now watch, you will make the turn right smack in front of him, right there. Perfectly legal to have this kind of help. Some people use a glove on the edge of the side, some people use a hockey line if there happens to be one in the ice. Extraordinary concentration. Skating very nice speed. Look at the effort, the concentration here that exists. And that's where the school of figure skating is today. In first place, Isabel de Navarre of West Germany. Dorothy Hamill, right behind her, very close, the United States. And in third place, surprisingly, a little bit further down, Diane Delu of the Netherlands. And that puts Dorothy Hamill in a superb position for a gold medal. Well, those school figures are very quiet, but that was extremely important and extremely significant. First of all, you can almost forget Isabel de Navarre as far as the overall championship is concerned. For example, in the recent European championship, she was first in the school figures there, but eighth in the free skating. She usually drops down the line. Dorothy Hamill, remember, was in fifth place in this phase in the world championships last year as opposed to first for Diane Delu. This time she's ahead of Diane. That means very simply that Dorothy Hamill is now the favorite for the gold medal in ladies' figure skating, and there's two more phases of it coming up. It ends up on Friday. So